diesel emissions have been a hot topic in the news lately. We've had a lot of conversations with the change administration, whether the emissions equipment is reliable is always a hot topic in the truck channel that happened to, um, oh yeah, I run that. And out here in Texas this week, I'm with Power Service Diesel Additives. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus, as we talk with Jessica. She is one of the chemists here mm -hmm. for the lab. And I thought, let's talk to her, because um, she's got all those bottles and stuff, and she does mixing like Igor in the laboratory of this stuff. And I thought, let's check out their latest product. It's this here. It's a diesel injector and DPF flush. I did a video with one of their gentlemen named Garth talking about this. As far as when your emissions equipment in your truck starts, well, having some problems and you need to see the diesel mechanic, maybe you put this in instead and maybe it saves your butt. And we got this point with this chemical because people like her created it. And let's talk about some of the testing you've done and does it actually work? And does this stuff that you've, golly gook looking stuff, don't drink this kids, does this actually make a difference? So you have a variety of white papers, um, which are scientific papers. I'll put those on the screen to talk about them. But let's talk about what this is and does it actually work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, diesel injector and DPF flush was created um, because there was kind of a need in the market. You know, so all this advanced emissions equipment kind of affects engine performance and people aren't necessarily happy with that. So it's not something that we can necessarily get away from, but we can try to make them work a little bit more efficiently and um, cause a little bit less problems and be a little bit less of a headache. So the diesel injector and DPF flush, what it does is it can you know, reduce the frequency of regions, it can improve fuel economy, it can keep your injectors clean and clean them very well, um, and also can reduce emissions. And by reducing emissions, you know, you're keeping emissions from accumulating in your particulate filter as well. So that's also going to help keep everything clean and nice and tidy and you don't have to regen as often, you don't have to use as much DEF, you don't have to use as much diesel. So hopefully save you money in the long run as well. Yeah, so I'm, you know, you horsepower, less DEF, and better fuel economy, what I'm seeing in these sheets. And those sensitive areas, if you're a fleet owner, Absolutely. and sensitive areas like say, the city of Long Beach, or, uh, Ports of Los Angeles, or major cities, you have less NOx in those areas. It's kind of a big deal, kids. So. Let's start, we have this uh, really impressive name for this test, a DW10B scientist test. And again, clearly I'm not a scientist, but we have this test that says evaluating diesel injector cleaners using this test. What's, what the hell is this test? So the DW10B test is an industry standard test where we take the same engine, and it's not something that only power service does. Like anybody who makes a diesel fuel injector cleaner uses this test to measure the efficacy of injector cleaners or detergents or whatever you would like to call it. Um, so what it does is it takes this Peugeot engine that is not in a vehicle. It is you know set up to a ton of different sensors and everything. So it it is just kind of like a bench top engine and you run this off of a fuel that's been dosed with one part per million zinc and what the zinc does is it causes deposits on your injectors and it causes them consistently and repeatably the same way every time that way you can actually measure the performance of the detergent itself you know because you need them to be formed consistently and repeatedly the same way every single time so you have less variables so any changes you see can be directly related back to whatever detergent you're adding to that. So in the course of this test you run 32 different you know startup running and cool down cycles to measure how much power that engine started with and how much it ended up with at the end of those 32 cycles. So when we um, tested diesel injector and DPF flush with this we lost almost 6% power in that kind of dirty up phase. So, and then when you, at the end of that phase, you add the detergent to it, and then you measure how quickly you return back to baseline power. So we were able to return back to baseline power within one cycle. And one cycle means like one tank of gas? It's one hour. No, no, no. Of run time. No, 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 no. One hour? <laughs> yes. So in so, this test, it's one and hour And I'm going to get fancy, you guys. I'm going to put this chart in the screen. This chart you're going to see in the screen. I'm going to get fancy in the back end here. So this is a chart. You see the blue lines, mm -hmm. you know, the, the orange line. So one hour later, yes. all of a sudden, you get this big boost of power improvement. Yes. Yeah, so it's, that's what's so amazing about this product is really just the speed at which it works. Because like Diesel Clean, you know, which is our injector cleaner that we've had for many years and it works very great, it takes it um, about four hours, four cycles. Um, so it's more of an everyday pro product. You run it all the time, you keep it clean, and it will clean up the injectors. It just takes a little bit longer. This is a straight shot, you know, straight to your injectors. It is going to clean them up so rapidly 
it is like a true just it's going to flush everything out of those injectors. And so not only did we see that 6% improvement in power, we actually saw 2% power gain over baseline. So that would equ equate to you know better than new. So you're actually going to get more power than when that vehicle is brand new off the lot. So. Ruh -ruh. That means some of those <laughs> diesel engineers are going to give you phone calls. Like, what did you do to our engine? <laughs> yes. So, and this is not, like I said, this is not your, just your test. No, this is not something that we made up. This is, oh, this is an industry standard test that you, anybody could run this test. This okay. is not something that we've made up. And any time possible, we always like to run industry standard tests because anybody can make up a test method right. that's going to give them the results that you want to see. So you, you want to use industry standard test methods and test equipment as often as possible. That's what's going to give you the most you know, significant results. Sure, okay, so, so then, so we know power came back. We got that, which is kind of remarkable. Um, fuel economy, so we have two different tests fuel economy. You have a light duty diesel test, which by the way is with my favorite engine, which I've, I think I've sold GM a lot of engines. And if GM's watching this, I want my check in the mail. Hello, <laughs> come on, let's go. The three liter Duramax inline six diesel, you ran a fuel economy test in this. What did you find out with that? So for the, the light duty vehicles, you know, we ran five tanks of fuel without any um, treatment in them at all. No, no additives whatsoever. So we ran five tanks of fuel and we got kind of like a baseline fuel economy. Fuel economy does, is very variable. It is kind of hard to measure consistently overall. So we try to do this to the best of our abilities in the field. You know, there are tons of variables. So, so in the light duty vehicle, we measured is about um, 25 miles per gallon. Um, you can show the exact numbers, about 25 miles per gallon. And then we treated one tank of fuel and then we had four subsequent untreated tanks of fuel. So the only additive that went in this was that one tank of flush. And so after that tank of flush, we were seeing an average of about 28 miles per gallon. So it's about an 11% improvement in fuel economy with just one tank of additive. I'm, I'm just, I'm pausing for a moment because there's a lot of jaws in the floor. I'm giving people time to get a jaw back up to their mouth because that's quite a bit of improvement for one tank of fuel. Absolutely. With a product. I mean, and not everybody's going to see those exact numbers. We saw some of our testing where we got much higher numbers and some where we would get a little bit lower. So this is pretty average. You know, we claim up to 10%, which I still think is an insane improvement. 10% improvement in fuel economy. I mean, that's 10% less diesel fuel you have to use. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, it's, that's, that's a big number, especially, yeah. I mean, I, I owned a truck with this engine in it and I got 25, not even using your product, just not even trying it. And I can't mm -hmm. imagine have a full-size truck with this product in it getting 28 miles per gallon. Yes. And here's the deal. You can buy this product, not buy, the pro not buy it. I don't care if you, whatever you do. I'm not getting paid by doing this. I, I'm not getting free lunch out of this deal. <laughs> so whatever you want to do. But that's pretty impressive numbers out of that. I yeah. think it's also more impressive the heavy duty what you found because heavy duty you didn't just do like a three quarters on one ton yes you had like a freaking semi yes yeah so we used a peterbilt 579 and this what was really special about this test is this vehicle is one that brings us some of our raw materials to our manufacturing plant here in weatherford so they go from houston to weatherford every day traveling the same route carrying the same load um and they fuel at the same fuel station so it really takes a lot of variables out. So, you know, honestly, these results are even more significant than some of our other testing because there's so many less variables with this particular vehicle. And so it was a pretty new 2024 Peterbilt that only had about 50,000 miles on it. And he was getting 5.9 miles per gallon average for his first five tanks of untreated fuel that we measured. And then we did the same thing as we did with the light duty. We would treat one tank of fuel and then had four tanks of untreated fuel after that. And then his average after that was like 8.9 miles per gallon, which is almost a 40% improvement in fuel economy. I, I don't know what's more insane. The 8.4 four miles per gallon, or the fact he drives that route every day. Every day. Like I've driven from Houston to Dallas and you couldn't pay me that much to drive that route. That's a long Back and forth freaking every day. <laughs> that's a, there's not enough podcasts in the world. And I love my podcast. I love the podcast in the world to do that route. But that's, that's pretty impressive for a additive to be able to do that. Yeah, and just how quickly it's able to do that. So right, that's yeah. really what's so cool about this additive is um, you, you can see, feel that it's working almost instantly. Where, you know, like an anti-gel. Right. You, know, you have to wait until it gets cold and sure. see if it works or, you know, um, a fuel stabilizer, you know, okay, did my fuel last, you know, six to eight months like it's supposed to, or did it go bad? It's just really hard to kind of measure the efficacy of those 
um, yourself, you know, without laboratory test methods. So being able to just feel the difference within an hour of adding that to your fuel tank is just really incredible. That is. I mean, and, and just putting it in and going and then all of a sudden seeing immediate differences. Mm -hmm. and, and especially you said the tanks afterwards. Yes. Not only in the initial tank, but the tanks yes. afterwards getting the benefits. Yes. And the results are sustained. That's why we do recommend, you know, treating it once a month. Um, so it's not going to last forever, um, but it does, it, it is sustained. It's not only for that one tank of fuel. So ideally you would treat with flush and then treat with diesel clean in, in between tanks and you'd have, you know, the most perfect fuel economy that you could potentially get. Um, but that it is not something that will last forever, but it, it is sustained um, after that first tank that you run. Okay, and then let's talk about the final item, the measuring NOx reduction on the heavy duty and light duty diesel engines. What did you find there? Yeah, so we tested um, the same Peterbilt. We ran emissions testing on it, and then we did a GMC 2500 and a GMC 1500 as well. So, um, you know, their baseline emissions are quite different. Yeah. Um, so we saw on, some, on the 2500, we saw NOx reductions of like 90%, which is not going to be, um, not everybody is going to see Sure. that much of That's an improvement. Right. Um, but overall, we saw about a 50% reduction in NOx emissions um, after one tank of fuel, of fuel treatment. Yeah, and so, yeah. so you got better emissions, you got better mm -hmm. fuel economy, and you got mm -hmm. a cleaner diesel, mm -hmm. which it, it, if you have a cleaner injectors and a cleaner DPF, mm -hmm. from my understanding, talking to diesel mechanics and talking to overall diesel owners, mm -hmm. you should have a more reliable truck. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, when you think about it, diesel fuel, when you talk about, like, consumable liquids that you put in your fuel, you know, oil and everything that you add in there, diesel fuel you're using the most of. So trying to do the most you can to keep that as clean and consistent as possible, everything is going to work as, it, as it's designed to. So, um, you know, reducing NOx and improving fuel economy really just means there's less junk going out to get caught in a particulate filter as well. So that's also one of the reasons why it can increase those region intervals is because it's just, there's less stuff for it to catch. So not and only is it cleaning it, but it's also reducing the amount of stuff that's building up in it. And then you cut apart like a DPF, right? And you cut apart the filter. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised the results when you cut that apart? Yeah, originally when we when we started doing our, you know, testing where we would remove the particulate filter, you know, before and after treatment and weigh it, um, they're really heavy. Yeah. Pieces just, you know, without any soot in it, it's very heavy. When you load it up with soot, it doesn't weigh that much more. It's going to weigh, you know, maybe 100, 200 grams more total if it was fully blocked. So when we saw that we would measure, we would run untreated fuel through it, take it off, measure it, and then put it back on, treat the fuel, and then immediately take it back off and weigh it again. It was 40 grams less. So when you start, you start seeing that, you know, you're weighing a piece of um, equipment that's 60 pounds. So you see it's just a really small reduction, or you're like, oh, well, that's really not doing much. But then when you really start looking at it and you're like, okay, 40 grams of soot, soot does not weigh very much. Like you'd have to have a ton of soot built up for it to weigh 40 grams. And for it to remove that much soot without having to go through a regen cycle is also really incredible. So. Did you have the urge to start scrubbing it? Were you like clean gone? I want to shake it out a little bit, like <laughs> Just, see everything coming out. <laughs> All right, that's what we got for you on this deep diesel injector and DPF flush. Again, I'm not a paid spokesman. I didn't get free lunch out of it, nothing like that. I just thought it was really interesting, especially in light of what's going on in the world, the missions and how these systems have been notoriously unreliable. And maybe we're getting to a point in time where the reliability conversation isn't as strong as what it was. The fuel economy gains are getting better with the state's new diesels and these treatment systems we have could make turn the corner. And I own that Duramax diesel. I enjoy the fuel economy. If you're telling me I can get even better fuel economy by using a few additives here and there, I'm all in. Yeah. All right. That's enough from us. Make sure you check out the videos on the channel up over here, website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.